Buongiorno from Florence, day number two. Yes, so if you haven't watched our previous video, make sure you go to check that out because we did so much yesterday and it was absolutely amazing. This is such a great city. One of the first things on our agenda for this morning, we are going to try to get up into the Duomo this morning. It's probably the most popular recognizable feature in Florence. Now we have seen other people's videos and pictures of this place, but they absolutely do not do it any justice and we're probably not gonna do it any justice either. This place is absolutely massive, so ornate and beautiful. It's absolutely stunning just seeing this as you're walking down the streets here in Florence. We don't necessarily recommend doing what we're doing. We're kind of just doing this on the fly. We don't have any reservations, anything like that. The line does look short, so. We're actually going inside the Duomo so to get inside the Duomo itself is free and of course to explore the outside is free but if you want to get into any of the other features such as the dome or the tower you do have to pay for those so we'll see the du I don't think we're gonna be able to go up in the dome because that's the most popular thing but we'll see if we can go up in the tower Okay, so we have made it inside the Cathedral di Santa Marina, sorry, Santa Maria del Fiore. This place is absolutely stunning. I'm trying not to talk too loud because I don't want to disturb anyone else. These columns in here are just absolutely massive. And then the stained glass of the windows is so beautiful. I just love these old cathedrals. They're, they're just amazing. Okay, I know it's kind of dark, so bear with me. You have this beautiful altar behind us, but if you look straight up, there is a gorgeous, really colorful fresco on the dome. Definitely worth coming inside and just taking a look at it. It is remarkable. So we attempted to get tickets to go up into the dome. There were none available. It's rare that they're available same day. It's worth a shot if you haven't reserved, but we did get the Giotto Pass, which will allow us to go up into the tower. Pro tip, the front of the cathedral is not necessarily the only entrance. You may want to walk around and look for the shortest line. I know during peak tourism season, it is all the lines are long, but we managed to get there and say, what, five minutes, five, 10 minutes? All right, I hope you have your walking shoes on because this is Giotta's bell tower and there are 414 stairs to the top. Let's go. <laughs> it's going to be a long one. <laughs> Whew, that's some leg burn right there. What do you think? We made it. <laughs> We are getting our work in, work out in today. <laughs> After yesterday, we walked eight and almost nine miles yesterday alone. And this is pretty demanding. It's very demanding. I do not feel bad about eating all the pizza and gelato last night because I think I just worked it off and then some. From up here, there are absolutely gorgeous views. You can see the Duomo. So I think this is a good, I hate to use the word substitute for if you can't get to the, to walk around on the top of the dome of the dome itself. I think this is a good alternative. I mean, if you have it in, you do both by, by all means. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I, unless you're super fit, I wouldn't do both on the same day. And if you are scared of height, it doesn't, so you can see this is caged. So I feel pretty safe and I'm, per, uh, I'm terrified of heights, but the Duomo, it's just a railing. So I don't know how well I would do. Probably not well. <laughs> all right, guys, time to go back down. We have finally made it down the tower. Back into the square. It look, kind of looks like the crowds are starting to pick back up a little bit. So I am glad that we went up the tower when we did. But after all that exercise, we were absolutely famished. So we are gonna hook back up with our friends and try to find a bite to eat or a couple bites to eat because, you know, starving. So lunch today is at Al Antico Vanaya, which is supposed to have some of the absolute best sandwiches here in all of Florence. So we obviously had to try them. We've got one here called La Boss, which has salami, pecorino cheese, truffle, their truffle sauce, and then rocket leaves. It's nice and toasty, warm, and I absolutely can't wait to try this. What'd you get, Mickey? I got corchetta, gorgonzola, and a pistachio cream. That pistachio cream looks amazing. It smells so good. I've been sitting here holding it like, is that what I'm smelling? It is what I'm smelling. <laughs> and we obviously decided just to get two sandwiches because they're huge, so we're just gonna kind of split them. And we figure if we're still hungry, the shop's right there. So we'll go back and get another one. <laughs> Thought I could sneak in a bite without. Oh, oh God, I'm... I cheated. I know. <laughs> I was trying to cheat. Okay, I guess I'm trying. I don't think I know. 
The truffle is definitely truffly. Thank goodness I actually like truffle. That bread is so good. I don't even know where to begin to take a bite of the sandwich and try to get a little bit of everything into one bite. Just go I don't for think it. it's gonna happen. Just go I'm for it. You got this. Okay, all right, all right, I got it. Go Mickey. Go big Mickey. bite, big bite. Oh. Oh my god. If you do a little dance, it's not good. It's so good. Like if I live here, I'd eat these all the time. Mm -hmm. I can really taste the pistachio. You guys may have to go get your own. Mickey and I are going this way. Bye. Bye. Shut up, sandwich. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> Some people say that this is, in fact, the best sandwich in the world. I happen to really love truffles. I happen to love prosciutto. And, uh, I mean, Rocket, it's Rocket, but the umami of the truffles, the saltiness of the meat, and the creaminess of the cheese, and just the crunch, it, the slight crunch and chewiness of the bread, I think, absolutely, this sandwich is definitely in the running for the best sandwich in the world. And if he keeps talking too much, I'm just going to have this all gone by the time you get any. Okay, so we just took a quick rest at the Airbnb, had a little bathroom break because there aren't a whole lot of bat public bathrooms around Florence, just so you prepare for that. And now we are headed to one of probably the most popular sites here um, in addition to the Duomo, and that is to the Galleria dell'Accademia. I'm gonna get all these together one day. And we are going to see, are we gonna see Jack? David. We're going to see David. So <laughs> David, of course, is considered to be one of Michelangelo's masterpieces. It's known for its extreme detail detail and I'm super excited because this was all hand carved and this is this is not something that can be easily recreated today even with all the technology and machinery that we have today. Let's face it, one of the world's greatest works of art. Really a privilege to be able to, you know, to be able to see it. Oh, by the way, we did make a reservation for it. You can stand, they have a, you have a line you can stand in to get in, but if you can make a reservation, you get a time slot, you walk, go up, walk into the line with your time. Okay, let's go. So we are in a room just past where David was and there are tons of sculptures here and they are all, most of them I believe, if not all of them, are by Lorenzo Bartolini and they are absolutely incredible. All right guys, so come for David for sure, but be sure to stay and check out the other stuff because it is all absolutely beautiful. The work and dedication that went into these pieces is absolutely obvious. Even if you're not like a fan of historical art, like it's it's incredible. I was actually impressed. So they have uh, leading up to the walkway to David, you're gonna see some unfinished sculptures from Michelangelo. And you can, when you look at those, you can kind of see, I guess, the yeah, where progress. Yeah, going with it, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, I'm absolutely floored. That's it, There's tons of other art to check out as well, which I highly recommend. I see a lot of people come in here, they check out David, then they leave. I mean, if art's not your thing, then I can understand, but there is a lot to look at, a lot to take in. And speaking of David, there's just so much intricate detail. It, it's absolutely beautiful. It's much bigger than what I imagined that the statue would be, but you could see the detail, his veins, like his hair, like the muscles in his abdomen. Like Calm it, down. Honey, he's, he's he's not single. <laughs> this place, to me, like all the sculptures, are a celebration of the human body, and I think that's kind of what it was for a lot of these artists. And we we have to remember that, like you know, everybody's beautiful, and and these are just beautiful works of art. So after viewing art, the obvious next thing you should do is get some gelato. So this is a little place right down from the gallery called Carabe. And we got, this one is a tangerine and lemon. So basically all just a citrus gelato. And then this one is actually pecorino cheese with some cherries in it. And it is absolutely incredible. They're all good, but it is so good. Look at those big chunks of cherry in there. And you should have pecorino cheese on everything. Now, Mickey got the strawberry, which... Fragola. 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 
It's it tastes straight up like like. It's like a strawberry in a. It's better than any strawberry ice cream I've ever had. So this is what I feel like strawberry ice cream should taste like. But it is, it's absolutely it's so good. I could eat this all day long. Yeah, you already they ate yours. This is a napkin. This is the best napkin I've ever tasted. <laughs> Quick suggestion, if you're trying gelato, which you absolutely should, even if you're lactose intolerant, I'd say just push through it. I mean, you know, one life to live and all. But get the small cup so you can share. You can always get a bigger size later. The small size allows you to try more. So, I mean, if this isn't enough for you, go back in, get another small cup of a different flavor. Perfect. Camera with me. Okay. Fresh okay, made? so yes. she just made this and we are gonna try it. When I say this is the best gelato and that we've had in Florence, I absolutely mean it. <laughs> if you're in Florence, you have to come by. Now, last, uh, last time we were here, they're explaining the importance of the canisters. So when you see the big heaping mounds of gelato, it, it, it allows the air and the light to oxidize, causing off flavors, and it doesn't, it doesn't taste as good. And that's why they use the round canisters, because it keeps the gelato cold evenly throughout, resulting in amazing flavor. One more thing I want to mention, their strawberry gelato, they use three kilos. That's over six pounds of strawberries to make. Now compare that to American ice cream. It is, it's absolutely incredible. They only use fruits that are in season. So whatever time of year you come here, uh, the flavors may be different. So in the fall, they have fig. In the summer, they have melon, watermelon. So, I mean, I can't recommend this place enough. All right guys, so it is our absolute last night here in Florence and we have one more thing that we absolutely must do. That's weird, the light just went out. But we are having dinner at Osteria Deli Oso and we are going to have what is considered one of the best steaks in the world. I cannot wait to try it. How much? One kilo three. One kilo three? <laughs> that is so good, that's amazing. How is that? That's freaking amazing. That's freaking incredible. Okay, so let's talk about this steak for a second. From what I read in history, there was a, it was the Feast of St. Lorenzo. Oh, hey! So, Feast of St. Lorenzo, they grilled a bunch of veal and they handed it out to the people and the people were happy. Let me tell you I'm how- I'm pretty happy right now. That steak is like butter. I didn't know exactly what to expect. They did give us the option to do it medium well, but I read that rare is the traditional form mm -hmm. and that's am, how we got it. So the outside had a nice, crusty, salty, little bit of pepper, crunched the outside, and the middle of this was absolute, just pure butter. So a little bit about the steak. The minimum order that you could order here was 1.2 kilograms. Yes, that's over two pounds of steak, almost three pounds of steak. I mean, it is a T-bone, so there's a big chunk of bone in there as well. But and it's also, about four fingers deep. So it is a thick steak and it was absolutely amazing coming from somebody who doesn't even like rare steak. Generally, I absolutely love it. Highly recommend this steak. Highly recommend that you get it rare. It was absolutely delicious. So Florence, your food, your city, we absolutely love you. We highly recommend Florence as well, but that is the end of our time here. So if you liked this video, make sure you like it. Subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, and until next time, guys, stay, stay wonderful. wonderful. Call it a day.